I don't know whether it was he who gave the order or his wife or General Baer gave the order. Who knows? But it was a mistake. And because it was such an egregious error on the part of, of Mr. Uh, Mr. Marcos, I tend to believe that he just wasn't in it at the time. There is a tendency in my mind to think that the decision was made by somebody stupid, like his general chief of staff. The statements of Martinez have opened a new can of worms, breathing new life to a murder that is as much covered by mystery as it is by fact. Martinez's statement only affirms the belief that the murder was all part of a military conspiracy. But still, the question remains, how far up did the conspiracy go? The uh, evidence that we gathered uh, point only to these military men who were uh, charged later in court and convicted. And so everybody can speculate. Uh, especially Filipinos, so we love to speculate. But you have to prove that. Ferdinand Marcos died in lonely exile in the United States in September 1989. His most loyal officer and the second most powerful man in the Philippines, General Fabian Ver, also died in exile in Thailand in November 1998. Both of them died without shedding any light on the Aquino assassination taking whatever secrets they had to their graves. Sergeant Martinez, the man who spoke too late, was released in 2007 when he turned 70. He was granted executive clemency. He is now a born-again pastor ministering to the prisoners of the National Penitentiary, his home for some 18 years. Three soldiers died while in prison and in 2009, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo released the remaining 10 convicted soldiers on good behavior. All of them applied for an absolute pardon, hoping they can still claim soldiers' benefits before they die. Twenty-seven years after a gunshot rang out on an airport tarmac, Martinez's story raises more questions than answers, and stories that we had always assumed to be true may no longer be so. I've been fighting for the truth from day one, and thanks God I am surviving and still at this age I still have the energy to stand up and run and do so many things because I'm energized by the truth. And truth is God. And if you're in the side of the truth, nobody can touch you. But there are those who say that the whole debate is meaningless, that in the end, it was about a man who chose to return despite the odds. In life and in death, Ninoy will always be the wonder boy of Philippine politics. The man who told the Filipino that he really was worth dying for and came home to prove it. When my dad died and they gave my father the send off, I think that was justice enough. They knew that he died for the country. He died fighting the dictator so that democracy will be back. It doesn't have to be uh, Marcos being put in prison or the Filipinos being told that Marcos killed Ninoy. For me, that's enough that the Filipinos, you know, um, gave my father that honor. Maybe that's the justice there. I believe that when a government becomes corrupt, there is no other place for a good citizen but to be in jail. And therefore, I shall wear willingly again the hair shirt of in prison. We are different from those that we oppose. Those that we oppose are happy with the material wealth, but for how long? I have written Mr. Marcos letters upon letters and I told him, read your history, my friend. I have no hatred for you, I only have pity because if you do not see and you do not remove the calluses from your eyes, 
If you do not remove your blinders, you will meet the same fate of all the dictators of history.